A couple of months ago, a friend of mine innocuously dropped the line, I think I gotta read The Art of War to get better at Apex. 500 hours is just not cutting it. And I did what any good friend would do. I mercilessly made fun of him for saying something so stupid. There's no way a 2,000 year old book could possibly help on a pixelated battlefield. But that got me thinking. What if my friend and all his stupidity was actually onto something? What if reading Sun Tzu's timeless classic could actually make you better at video games? So I decided to stop by my local bookstore after work and pick up a copy of The Art of War. Hello and welcome to GameSpot No HUD, the show where we tinker with games to create new and interesting experiences. However, today we aren't changing the game. No, the game is changing us. <laughs> Now, I'll be honest, I play a lot of shooters. I've put in well over a thousand hours into Call of Duty over the many years, and I used to play a ton of Rainbow Six Siege. But I wouldn't say I'm good at shooters. I have decent reflexes and I have a basic understanding of tactics, but I'm the type of player that gets swept up in the moment and I run out into the open and die. Obviously, my tactics do differentiate from game to game, but I can be a little hot-headed. It's also worth mentioning that I've never read The Art of War. Sure, I know quotes from it. I'm pretty sure back when Call of Duty used to throw quotes up on the screen after you died, they had a few Sun Tzu quotes, but I couldn't tell you what they were or what they meant. All that to say, I believe that my complete lack of culture and FPS mediocrity makes me the perfect subject for this little experiment. So here's the plan. I'm gonna read The Art of War a few times, I'm gonna do my best to extract the major tactics Sun Tzu outlines, and do my best to retrofit them into Player Unknown's battlegrounds. Why PUBG? Well, a major theme that runs through The Art of War is how a commander or soldier reacts to different situations. The warrior shapes his victory from the dynamic of the enemy. War is unpredictable, and so is PUBG. The ever-tightening map means I won't always know the battlefield. The random assortment of weapons means I won't be able to control my flow of resources. And the slower pace means I can think through confrontations. The Call of Duties are a bit too predictable, the Rainbow Sixes are a bit too fast-paced, and the Fortnites are just not my thing. Additionally, I've played over 300 hours of PUBG, so I have a pretty good idea of my current skill level. Now, it's time to read. After three read-throughs and copious amounts of notes, I think I've arrived at a foolproof procedure derived from this book to ensure success in a virtual battlefield. I call it the flow chart of war. But before we delve into the secrets of success, we must first set the stage. What exactly is the art of war? The book consists of 13 chapters that break down different aspects and phases of warfare that range from diplomacy to moment to moment tactics. Fight downhill, do not swallow bait, be ready for the unexpected, and so on. Some of the examples the text uses are a bit dated, however, many of the ideas are still relevant today. Famous generals such as Napoleon Bonaparte even cited Sun Tzu's work. But like most classics, the art of war proved to be controversial. Why? Because Sun Tzu embraced deception. This didn't sit well with the followers of Confucianism. They believe that deception, even in warfare, goes against the very values of Confucius. Those opinions didn't stand the test of time, though. Nearly two millennia later, The Art of War remains one of the most influential military texts of all time. But what tactics, if any, could hold water on a virtual battlefield? Well, let's start with Sun Tzu's Five Steps of War. Measurement, estimation, calculation, comparison, and victory. Measurement determines estimation, estimation determines calculation, calculation determines comparison, and comparison determines victory. The way I see it, a general or leader needs to first measure the terrain, estimate the enemy's strength, calculate all the available options, and compare our situation with the enemies. Easy enough, but how do I translate this into PUBG? To make things simple, let's think of measurement as geography. This encompasses the terrain, the circle, and our location within or outside the circle. Estimation is threat assessment. How many enemy squad members are there, what kind of weapons and armor are they rocking, and what level of tactics are they employing? Calculation is battle plan. If I were to engage, how would I go about doing it? Comparison is, well, comparison. How does the enemy's situation stack up against my situation? Now, if I've accurately assessed the situation, then I should come out victorious. Know the enemy, know yourself, and victory is never in doubt, not in 100 battles. 
Given the nature of PUBG, once I've run my tactical test on a threat, I have two options, aggression or avoidance. The skillful warrior attacks so that the enemy cannot defend. He defends so that the enemy cannot attack. I will only take the aggressive route if I have the perceived tactical advantage or if there's no other option. If I have no perceived advantage and I can avoid the altercation, then I will. This is where warfare's psychological factors take root though. I should assume that the enemy is also thinking this way. Sure, they probably won't have a whole damn chart like me, but at some level, the fight or flight mentality is going to kick in. If we are clearly overpowering them, they will flee. If they are overpowering us, then they will push. That's human nature, and human nature is predictable. And predictability can be exploited with deception. My perceived advantage is even more advantageous if my enemies believe they have the advantage. When able, feign inability, lure with bait, strike with chaos. War is founded on deception. The best way to deceive is to be unpredictable. His form is visible, but I am formless. I am concentrated. He is divided. I feel like we are missing something though. Aggression and avoidance assume that the insurgents are always going to be hostile. Maybe there's a third option we could take, diplomacy. Sun Tzu frequently points out that conflicts can be won without setting foot on the battlefield, and in most cases, those are the greatest victories of all. Ultimate excellence lies not in winning every battle, but in defeating the enemy without ever fighting. The highest form of warfare is to attack strategy itself. Now, anyone who's been in a Call of Duty lobby knows that diplomacy can be a bit fickle among gamers. The shoot-first attitude is hardwired into our brains. Most games even reward that kind of thinking with scoreboards, challenges, and flashy point systems. I myself am guilty of pulling a virtual trigger without giving too much thought to the consequences of my actions. That's going to have to change. When possible, I will do my very best to disarm combatants through the art of persuasion. Now, keep in mind, just because I want to cooperate with other players doesn't mean I can let my guard down. There can only be one winner, and any truce forged on the battlefield is a temporary means to an end. Eventually, I'll have to kill them, but I'll wait until they are of no use to me. If diplomacy fails, and it will, bullets will fly. However, if I've performed an accurate threat assessment using my flowchart of war, I should still have the tactical advantage. All right, so before I put the flowchart of war to the test, let's recap. Before a fight, I must study the geography, assess the threat, formulate a plan, and compare my situation with the threats. If I have the perceived advantage, I will lead with deception and strike with deception. If I have the perceived disadvantage, then I will tactically retreat or lay low. In some cases, if the moment is right, I will bewilder with diplomacy. Wait, hold up, man. Let's team up. Let's team up. Let's team up. Don't shoot. Let's team up. Let's team up. Let's team up. Let's, hold on, hold on. Let's team up. You want to team up? You want to work together? Don't shoot, don't shoot, okay. Green poncho, let's team up. How you make me do that? Green poncho, don't shoot, green poncho. Let's work together. Hey man, I know you're in there, you want to team up? Let's work together. Okay, diplomacy. It's guns blazing from now on. Well, after I've properly analyzed the threat. In one evening, shortly after creating the flowchart of war, I walked away with not one, but two chicken dinners. I haven't played PUBG in years, and even when I was playing regularly, my chicken dinner rate was embarrassingly low. Sometimes I'd go weeks without a proper win. So my flowchart of war was working. Everyone else out here is playing checkers and I am playing chess. It isn't perfect though, and my guy Sun Tzu over here never accounted for all these cracked gamers out here on God, or whatever, whatever the kids say these days. I could read this book a dozen more times and still be shit at aiming. My elite tactics help, sure, but sometimes the other guy behind the monitor is just better than me. Obviously, I got outmaneuvered somewhat regularly and met an untimely demise, but I couldn't help but notice my improved win rate. It did come at a cost, though. I was really annoying to squad up with. 
All right, coming up behind, coming up behind. Uh, take it slow, take it slow. Crouch, crouch, crouch. I, I can hear you. Get down, get down, get down. Don't shoot, don't shoot, don't shoot. Yep, yep, get down, get down. Let's wait. Give it a... I just said not to shoot. To your right, to your right, to your right, to your right. Look, to your right, to your right, to your right. Okay, get out of the car. We don't... We don't need the car right now, get out of the car. Winning was nice, but honestly, I don't really game to win. I game to hang out with friends. Not to mention calling out plays and always thinking 20 steps ahead was exhausting. I really started to hate myself after a couple days of this, and I was gravitating to far more relaxing games like Breath of the Wild. I wonder if there's some sort of balance I could strike, dedicate one of my brain cells to tactical coordination, and the other one to just having fun with friends. Or maybe I just don't game for glory. Sure, I love winning especially when it comes to Smash Bros, but after a long day of work, I just want to shoot stuff with pals. I feel like with streaming culture, esports, and challenge modes, it's easy to get caught up in the skill aspect of gaming. What's your KD? What are your reaction times? And so on. It's cool if that's your thing and that's why you play games, don't get me wrong, but maybe it's okay to just be mediocre, or dare I say bad at them. But that kind of brings us to the point of this episode and no HUD in general. Play games how you want. If you want to go for glory, then go for glory. If you want to mess around, then mess around. And if you want to play games to catch up with friends, then do exactly that and don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Thank you for checking out this episode of No HUD. Please leave a comment down below of what you'd like to see next and we'll see you next time.